What are some of your favorite memories of touring with Ramstein? Dear. Well. <laughs> wow. I mean, I've toured with them. Um, I feel like I could answer this question like seven times because I've toured with them <laughs> in, in a bunch of different capacities. Uh, the first time I toured with them, uh, my band at my band at the time was opening up, which was Combi. And then, uh, and then that tour cycle ended and it was like really, you know, sad. It was like, um, it, you know, well, well, the way, the way, the way it works is like, you get, you get, we got offered a, a leg of the tour. It was like, you know, the first leg of the Liba is for Alada tour. And um, the tour itself lasts for like two and a half, three years because they're going all over the world. They, you know, they do Europe, they take a little break, they do America, take and that's how it all works. There's like A market, B market, C market in all the territories. And um, so originally we had only been offered the first leg of the uh, European tour for that. And then halfway through the tour, um, they decided they liked having us around and they said, we would love to have you guys for the whole rest of the touring cycle. So that was like, wow, oh, we get to do this over and over again for the next couple of years, which was awesome. And then when that ended... Um, our last show was in Vegas, uh, yeah, at the end of the U S run. And, and it was really sad because it was like, now they, they you know, they were like, well, we're going to do this other tour now. And, you know, we have to pick another band to go on tour with us. <laughs> and it was like, Oh, like at that point, you're so, you're so like ingrained in the family and the, of the band and, and their family and the crew and everything, right. you know, yeah. it's a really special <laughs> situation. And then, and then that was it. And then, and then lo and behold, in the middle of their next tour, uh, Till and Richard called me on the phone. I'll never forget it. Cause I was sitting, um, um, I was sitting in the car with my father who, who had just, uh, you know, my son used to live, um, really far away from me and, um, and I'm divorced from my ex-wife from his mom and and um but we're all cool by the way <laughs> but um i was i had just dropped him off and my dad was driving me because i didn't have a car at the time and uh because i always lived in in like new york city because you just need train you just take trains there and uh and i was driving back with my dad on like a four-hour drive and then all of a sudden i saw like richard calling my phone and i was like oh i was like <laughs> hey what's going on and he's like and it's like uh, Richard and Till, and they're like, Joey, we're about to go on stage. Um, we wanted to know if you wanted to uh, come on tour with us. And, and uh, you know, we have a band out now, but for the next, the, the next tour and then the rest of the album cycle, we'll take you. And then you could just open for us as a DJ. And, uh, and I was like, fuck yeah, you know? Like, <laughs> oh, I get to do this all over again. And they were like, yeah, and like, you know, obviously you're not going to have your band and your bus. So you'll just come on the private jet with us. And I was like, wow. <laughs> you know? And, and I became, then I became part of like the immediate band crew. Um, and uh, that was like, that was a really special, um, special opportunity. And, and, uh, and I, but how my days went then was um, I would DJ uh, and I, and, 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 and it was funny a couple of weeks before the tour, um, I had created like a great DJ set of like original stuff and, and, you know, other stuff that I liked. And a couple of weeks before the tour, I find out that I can only play Rammstein stuff. And I'm thinking like, what, what do you mean? I'm opening for you guys. Like, how can I only play uh, your music before you go on? Um, but legally uh, that's the, what the situation was. So I just had to roll with the punches and I had them send me all the remixes that they've ever done. And this was at a time when like, you know, script, like e e e EDM music, I, I always confuse it with EBM music, which is like techno, <laughs> yeah. uh, like goth techno, but um, EDM music was, this is, this is when it was like getting huge. Like Skrillex was huge and uh, you know, uh, Knife Party and all these band, these like producer bands. Um, and they sent me these remixes, but back when I was growing up is like when these remixes are from, like, do you imagine what the remix for do host is like, is like, you know, a guitar riff that repeats for 12 minutes with it. it and it's just, you know, I, I, I was like, I can't go on stage and play these remixes. Like, I, I, I don't know. And, you know, they didn't, 
they didn't, they had a different idea, you know? And, and so, so I, I, I just took a total shot in the dark and I was like, can you send me the remix kits or the stems as we call them in the industry for, you know, and I listed all their, like, like 10 of their biggest songs. And I did not think that they were going to say yes. And then next thing I know, a week later in my email, I have the stems for, and the studio recording individual tracks for all of their um, biggest songs they ever recorded. And I was like, wow. And then what I did was I, I reached out to a bunch of, um, producers that I'm friends with that I've worked with. And, 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 you know, Daniel from aesthetic perfection was one of them. And I had a bunch of people work on remixes with me. And then I performed those remixes live as, and, and, and what turned into be their actual intro. Um, the first, the first show with them on that tour was in Florida. And basically the, the day before, uh, the first show, they, they, they did their rehearsal and then they were like, okay, Joey, like do your, do your thing. And, uh, and then we're going to see, they, they were like, we're going to see how it is. And worst case scenario, you just don't do it. And then, uh, you can come on tour with us anyway, and we'll find something else for you to do. And, uh, and I went on stage and I, and I did the remix, uh, set. It was like 30 minutes long. And, uh, they all, all of them just were right in front of the stage watching it. And then afterwards there were like, all right, we're going to like talk and then like just hang out. And I had this like weird feel. I was like, Oh, like, I'm so stoked to be here. But like, what if I don't get to do this? It's like yeah. the coolest thing ever. <laughs> and then they called me um, to down by the pool, by the hotel. And they were all sitting there and they were like, all right, here's the deal. <laughs> you're going to, you're going to go on 30 minutes before we go on. And you're going to at the end, get the, you like, do like, do figure out a way to like, get the crowd hyped. And then you'll get a signal from, from the tour manager off the side of the stage with a flashlight and we're going to come on stage. So I went from being the like opening DJ act to being their actual intro and being more of a, a, an intro, a 30 minute introduction yeah. to the show, which was fucking sick. Like I'll never forget the feeling of, you know, at the, I would do my 30 minute set. And then, um, at the end I would, I would hit a loop on my DJ controller and I had samples and I would get the crowd to chant Rammstein and, and fuck the DJ too. Cause a lot of people were like, we don't want to hear a DJ. So I was like, okay, <laughs> yeah, so you can say fuck the DJ to me, you know? <laughs> and then, and then I would, I'd get the crowd super hyped and then I'd get the flashlight and then I would just like go back and run off the stage and the fucking bridge would come down and everyone would start going nuts and they would walk across the bridge from the back of the room. Now, in the meantime, um, someone would have packed up my DJ gear and left it on the side of the stage for me. And then I would grab it and go to the after party room and set my DJ gear up again. And then I would go out and watch the show and invite people to the party and, um, and just enjoy the show. And then right after they got off stage, I would go and DJ again for anywhere from like three to six hours. And, uh, nice. yeah. And now, and now, um, you know, and then I did, I completed that touring cycle and then, uh, and then it didn't make sense to have me on again for a minute and they were doing festivals. Uh, and then, uh, Richard called me one day and he was like, um, you know, Richard's one of my best friends. So uh, we, I, I imagine that, um, there's no one else in, we're just very close. And, 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 uh, he called me and he was like, I just need you around, man. Like, do you want to, do you want to come on, um, on the tour and be my assistant and like, you know, help with things throughout the show and you can continue to DJ at the after parties and stuff like that, like from now on, you know, and I, and I accepted it. And so now I'm, now I'm a, a like a full-time crew member for Rammstein when, whenever they're touring. Um, and I'm not a part, I'm not performing, but people do ask me from time to time, like, don't you wish you were performing? Um, and the answer is that, to be honest with you, I like my main reason for ever wanting to do what I do is um, I've always wanted to just be able to, um, I love music, but I love traveling. I love touring. And I always just wanted to be able to travel and like experience the world. You know, that was like my main goal when I was a little kid, I was like, 
I'm going to, I'm going to like play music, but my goal, like I always, I said to myself since I was a little kid, I was like, I don't want to be rich and famous because those are doing this for the wrong reasons. I want to do this so that I can travel around the world. And of course I want to be able to pay my bills and like support my family eventually when I have one, but I just want to like experience the world. And, and that was always my goal. And I've been lucky enough to, you know, get a lot of the gigs I do drumming, um, I know I'm a unique drummer um, and I offer something um, special to any band that I'm playing in, but I don't need to be doing that. I just love to travel with, with the people and to be a part of this machine that is Rammstein is like such an honor. And every day when I'm getting the band and Richard ready for the show and we all walk to the fucking stage with the crowd chanting and now they're playing in stadiums, which is the biggest thing you could play in in the world. It's like... I get the, I get a, almost a bigger, I, I, I'd say the same rush as if I was playing the show just because right. like I'm a part of this machine and I've helped to get them ready. And now they're going to go up there. And it's like, and, and the thing about them and their crew and everything, like everyone is super diligent and like really a hard worker and really great at what they do. And everyone is, um, include always included and made to feel like um they're valued and that the shows could not happen the way they do if each and every one of those people weren't there doing their job so so i really feel like i'm a part an important part of that machine and and that's a really special feeling you know awesome for sure <laughs> yeah. yeah i love the um, i love the 30 minute set that you used to have because it was so original because it's almost like a trailer you know like yeah. you're watching a trailer before the movie and you're just get more hyped for the actual movie, you know? Um, yeah. I, I appreciate that. Not, not a lot of, well, I just didn't say not a lot of people. Um, look, anytime that someone's going to see an opening band, you face like that opening band, no matter what always faces adversity of knowing <laughs> like, are people going to like me? You know what I mean? Like, right. are people going to like this and, and what's this going to be like? And I totally get, that people were confused about what I was doing. It was what I, what I was asked to do by the band. A lot of people didn't understand that people. I got a lot of hate on my social media. Like who the fuck do you think you are opening for Ramstein and playing <laughs> Ramstein? That's the stupidest idea ever. But maybe if, you know, of course the band's not going to be like, Hey, no, we told Joey to do that. But like, you know, it, I wonder if the people knew that maybe, maybe they, uh, they wouldn't think that, it sucked. I don't know. <laughs> like, like, you know, I did get like, you know, it was divisive. Some, some, some people didn't like it and some people did like, it. and I totally get the people that didn't like it, but that's why I kind of made a, made a joke of myself. And, and I actually like sold shirt cause I could sell shirts at the merch booth. So I'd sold shirts that said, fuck the DJ. <laughs> and I figured, and even people that hated me could buy it and enjoy it, you know? And I get the crowd to do fuck the DJ. I just wanted to have fun with it, you know, have everyone else have yeah. fun. Generally speaking, it went over great. Some shows were fucking awesome and people were going bananas, but there was two shows that were really bad. Where people <laughs> okay. were throwing things at me and screaming at me. No um, way. Yeah. I think one was in France, which, which sucks because France, France has like some of the best crowds, but to be fair, um, to be fair, it, it it, it makes sense that they would also have some of the worst crowds. They were very, very passionate people. So if they right. really like something, you're, <laughs> you're in for a great surprise. And, and I guess if they really don't like something, you're also in for a great surprise. Yes. <laughs>